to. Thank you very much, Dr. Vella. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us today. Um, thank, you. thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to have you here, um, and I wish you a happy Easter on behalf of my colleagues over here, too. Um, this COVID-19 has changed a lot of lives, and yourself as a family man, um, how has it changed everything? I know you come from a very close-knit family. You're a father, a grandfather. Um, you've got a lot of in-laws, and usually you gather together. Well, um, like everybody else, we're very careful. Miriam and me both are over 70 now, and so we are classified as vulnerable. So we have to be very careful. My concern is obviously lest members of my family become affected. Not that I don't care for the people who are affected, obviously. But, you know, I mean, family, family comes first. As you rightly said, Leah, we're a very tightly knit family, and uh, so there's the strain of not meeting, of, of having to use Skype to speak to your children. Um, I'm also concerned about the fact that, that this COVID has, as a matter of fact, disrupted university schedules for my grandchildren. And I'm also worried about um, how this could affect their jobs and careers, future careers, in the post-COVID um, economic scenario, which is not, which is rather bleak, I would say. And then I also have, have as you know, I have a house in Zaytun, which I've abandoned practically, that needs to be looked after. So I'm going to do, I'm doing that through, through uh, other people. So um, practically I've been here in, in San Antonio, I've been logged in for the last four weeks. This is how we, this is how we're, we're, we're spending our time. And with very few visitors or no visitors, I would imagine. No visitors, no visitors. And uh, skeleton staff, I would imagine. Skeleton also. staff and trying to, trying to um, uh, give as much space and as much leave to the to the staff to to be at home and to have the least amount of contacts with us mm -hmm. uh, we're taking very very stringent measures taking temperatures every time people come in and um, you know having having antiseptic on 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 to wipe our feet on mats we're doing all all we can to try to avoid as much as possible um uh, complications how has it affected your public life well, I mean, you can imagine that, that my diary is empty, practically, because everybody has cancelled meetings. Um, we're not having any person-to-person any -person meetings. I mean, the last time we had the appointment of the Chief Justice, we had to, to space ourselves as if we had just landed from, from, from a capsule from Mars. Um, uh, so practically, it looked so, so strange in that position. But that's how it's happening. Um, otherwise, um, I'm doing all I can through telephones, through letters, and on certain occasions even with Skype. Yes. As a phys physician and a family doctor, how, what insights can you give to the public, being a physician yourself? Well, as you know, um, I've seen many flu epidemics in my career, flu epidemics. Um, some years they used to be very virulent than others. However, what I'm, what I'm impressed with is the, is, the, is the ability of coronavirus to spread um, so quickly. It has, it has taken the globe in practically four weeks. However, it's very heartening to note that 80% of the cases are either without symptoms or else have mild ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, even that children um, are less susceptible, apparently. That's what the general impression is even though um, males are more infected than females. Mm -hmm. We have to, we have to um, obviously, to heed the um, social distancing that is being um, uh, recommended and also the hygienic measures. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that, that a vaccine will be available as soon as possible because that's the only solution. Yes. Unless, obviously, we go through the worst of it and, and we end up with having um, what is referred to in, in medical practice as herd immunity. But that means that many people would have suffered yes. until that is, that is obtained. Yes. And many people are not recommending it for our island here. Is that correct? The herd, it, depends, the herd immunity. it depends on the strategy that the health authorities are, 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 have embarked on. Hmm. I think that they are doing an excellent job. They, they are, are doing they a very are. good job, um, being very clear with their messages, being very very transparent, and they are, they are trying to engage 
everybody to help them to achieve what they have they have in mind. And um, this brings me to the fact that what they are trying to do is obviously to what is referred to in, in medical parlance, uh, flattening the curve. Yes, which absolutely. means that trying, trying as much as possible to have um, or to, to avoid an overwhelming surge in cases at any one time. Um, uh, that so, would that would overpower um, mm -hmm. the, the the health authorities. However, from from the impression I get up to now, it seems that we have um, uh, somehow controlled. I might be optimistic. I don't know, but yes. this is my impression. Yes, uh, we have somewhat controlled. And if we heed, if we take more notice, and we obey the instructions that are being given, I'm hoping to God that we will not go through the worst part of it. We are still not there. We still have got to to come to the peak of it. We've got to but have a lot of patience. We, there has to be. This is this is this is epidemiology, and statistics cannot cannot be cannot be changed. I mean, this is. We're not different from other countries. And my, my expectations are that we'll be obviously moving into, into a peak period, which hopefully will not involve large numbers of patients, and that, again, hopefully, um, everybody will have, will have due care and will have the, the, the personnel and the nurses and the doctors available to give him the, the maximum of care that anybody would need in any particular circumstance. So yes. this is this is uh, how I'm seeing things. Maybe I'm being a little bit optimistic, but uh, let's be honest. It doesn't look it doesn't look all that drab. Yes. Compared to what's happening in other countries, but we should not lower our guard. This is very very important. Very um, good advice from you. Uh, just a very brief message to give some hope to the public. Perhaps you can address the public um, with an Easter message. Well, I mean, the message is practically what I've been saying all along. Um, I'm hoping that we will be, we will be um, through this um, with the least damage possible. Um, uh, by word of encouragement, obviously, it's all those who have to stay indoors. I know it's, it's not easy. I know it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, there could also be some mental strain, some mental problems with certain people, especially those who are old and have to stay in small apartments, and that is something something which one will have to consider, especially being um, derived of having the solace of meeting their family. Mm -hmm. However, this is a case of, of uh, um, something we have got to go through, and I'll take this occasion, obviously, to, to not only encourage everybody to abide by advice, but also to, to spare on also by thanking all those doctors, nurses, paramedics, and service staff, members of the police and the and the security forces, and all those who are attending to the needs of the elderly, especially Thank you those very in, much. especially those in old people's homes and in the Coradino Corrective Corrective Facility. So we are thanking I'm thanking all those people who are doing any type of voluntary work, because this is the basis of um, uh, solidarity. Thank and you. Thank you so much. My last word of advice, Leah, is stay safe. Stay safe. And you too. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you, Thank you very much for today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was the end of our briefing today. And that was His Excellency, uh, the President of the Republic of Malta, Dr. George Vella. And I'd like to wish you a good night. Stay safe.